So I'm joined by Tim from Go Geothermal. Tim, let's talk CTC heat pumps. Okay. So it's a brand that isn't very familiar to a lot of our followers on our forums. When I kind of look at the brands, it, it is usual, it's the usual suspects, you know, the Mitsubishis, the Nevis. What exactly is CTC as a heat pump and how does it differentiate itself from some of the other brands that are on the market? I think that's all fair comment. And I think what you've highlighted there is we are a very good, well-kept secret. So even though we're part of a huge organization, um, which is ultimately owned by NIBI behind that organization, so CTCAB is a group of companies, leading companies in Europe. We're one of those companies. We're very aware that we need to raise our brand presence in the UK, such as a show like this, um, ideal time to do it. We're very different to a lot of the brands here today, not least because CTC, 100-year-old company, no, we've been in renewables nearly 25 years, so we're very much ahead of where other people started in terms of distribution. So in terms of the two companies combined, we offer a lot of things that other companies can't, all the things that come with time served as opposed to throwing money in front of something. We've, we've learned, you know, the long, hard way, which brings its advantages and challenges, obviously. You mentioned Nivi. So is this a white-labeled Nivi product? Oh, I'm glad you asked me that. Absolutely <laughs> not. Okay. Absolutely not. To make it very simple, CTC and NIBI were competing companies in Sweden, um, both very, very strong in Sweden, at, going back many years now. So ultimately, NIBI Group bought what was Enatec at the time, who made their own heat pumps. Okay. CTC were a brand very strong in Sweden for a long time, 100 years. NIBI being a more outward exporting business, ultimately grew much faster. CTC brand operates in many countries now autonomously as, as it does in the UK. We represent that brand and we're exclusive with that brand in the UK. And they, they co-own our business right. now. So we're very, very interlinked. The CTC is very much a different brand. Okay. Um, from made, designed, um, totally different factories, totally different approach to their brands. And if you were to visit Small Land, You'd see the different factories, but obviously there's integration because you'd want to play to your strengths as a big group. Of course. Yeah, but yeah, very different. So the biggest driver for heat pump installations from a homeowner's perspective is the installer coming and saying, you know, I've been trained on brand X, brand Y. This is what I fit. Do you guys have your own training kind of courses for installers before they fit the CTC heat pumps? Very interesting point. I think um, it's often misunderstood and unappreciated how much um, influence the installer has when they go to the homeowner. Yeah. Now, very clear to make this a homeowner example, because obviously we're selling to commercial space as well. But where homeowners are concerned, it very, it very much is um, the installer has a huge influence. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question directly, we've always took a very much handy old approach because we've got everything from extremely time served installers who are very experienced, and it is just more a gentle nudge and a nuance train right through to absolute beginners and it's very different how you yeah. treat those installers, as you can imagine from a home owner perspective we like to interact with those as well because we know that's the end customer so we're very much about you know we've been around 100 years plus there's a reason for that we know that our best advert is our customer base and because we believe in the technology and we want the homeowner to have a good journey because we know that's our best selling tool it's a bit of a no-brainer that we have to em embody both training centers We've got two UK training centres, fully resourced, very busy, getting busier. Uh, we also have a mobile training unit, which we oh, think wow. is unique, where we'll come to anywhere in the UK, fully working heat pump on there, um, and we'll take the training to the actual customer, whether it be a merchant branch with lots of installers or a big M&E company. We'll take it to them. We realise that time is the most valuable asset with yeah. all these businesses. It's quite an expensive resource to have, but it's more than worth it because we remove that. Well, I don't want to drive there. We're in Bristol or yeah, well, wherever it might be. That's good. But there's a fixed sense as well, and we'll have more of those as well. So from a warranty perspective now, so a mm. lot of the warranties are tied into installer training. This is, yeah. this is a structure that a lot of brands do. So, you know, out of the box, if it's just fitted by... Joe. Yeah. And we know why. Yeah. 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 So you get two years and if it's, you know, if they have finished the training, you know, to the highest degree, you get seven years. How is your warranty structured? I thought about this. And I think, well, the, the simplest way is the sort of starting point, if you like, is um, seven years parts, two years labor. But effectively, most of our installs, if not all of them now domestically, are seven and seven. It's a very, very good warranty. Yeah. So that's the belief we have in that product if it's installed correctly. 
it's pretty bulletproof. Essentially, it's going to last a lot longer than seven years if it's maintained correctly and it's installed by someone who knows what they're doing. The reason I wouldn't say it's just seven years is on projects where we've got volume and we want to entice them away, shall we say, from other Asian brands that may be more price competitive but may not offer the features, we will offer 10-year plus warranties in the certain circumstances. One of properties, seven and seven is pretty standard. You know, this fit and forget mentality is obviously not the way forward. We've arguably got the nearest thing to a fit and forget air source, but we would never endorse that, obviously. There's a strong feeling in parts of Europe now with some of the technology that's out there, the high-end brands like ourselves, that we should be selling it as a doesn't need any looking at for at least five years. We can't do that in the UK just because of the negative connotation of it. What it does give me is a lot of faith in that brand and what it can do. I know that they mean it from a good place, but we have to keep reinforcing that, follow up the customer. And then in simple business terms, if you're following a journey with Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but eight years, nine years, 12 years, whatever it might be, on the air source in his replacing, you're there, yeah. front and center, they're gonna trust you because you've lived a journey with them. There are companies that just wanna fit it and do a good job and go, and there are maintenance companies that will take that on, but I think if you can do both, it's a much more sort of soulful experience for everybody. They are the companies that everybody looks to and goes, oh, you know what, they're, they're in it for the long term. What kind of sizes do they come in? Uh, you know, what, what's the smallest, what's the biggest, and what's in between? Literally, and not many brands can say this, literally we can take everything from three kilowatts right through to 1.8 megawatts and beyond because of our range of products. Right. I mean, we're, we're trying to consolidate it. We've got about 56 products at the moment. That is being consolidated because we're a group and who wants to do the same thing in four factories? We want to combine knowledge and, and experience and make a really, really good product amongst the different group companies and play to that strength. Also, I think it's overwhelming for installers and specifiers, yeah. but there's no getting away from it. When we've got products like the Eco Zenith over there, which is unique to us, other companies don't have that yeah. product. No, it's not every day you put it one in, but the fact we can do it, mm. we are a specialist at heart, but we realise to be a brand that goes forward, we have to capitalise on some of that huge growth in air to water, which is why we have the two air to water units here today. Well, basically we can heat and cool any building. It's as simple as that. It's all about scale and we've got it. So this is a question that I ask every manufacturer. If you, for example, buy a five kilowatt heat pump from you, is that five kilowatts at seven degrees or is that five kilowatts at like minus two? It, what is it, the data badge zone? It's, it's, almo it's almost impossible to give you a nice, neat answer. Okay. Probably the most helpful way is to say, we all know that heat pumps have sweet spots and we all know that if we talk air to water, which is 80% percent of the market, that obviously on a nice summer's day at, 25 degrees like today in Birmingham yeah. literally if you want to have a shower at 38 or 42 degrees the the jump is so small yeah. the efficiencies are incredible we also know that the average winter temperature in the UK is 7 degrees so if you can optimize your heat pump to that that's great so you know the smart companies are doing more of that but I mean there's a drop off with brands yeah you know some are better some are worse we're no different because we're using the base technology is the same where the differences come in the more high-end brands, shall we say, is how they tweak, how they innovate, how they change away from what was always done. I'll be the first to admit, all brands will have a drop-off at certain temperatures, and it'd be, it'd be wrong to misrepresent the technology, because we don't need to. No. It's superb. Uh -huh. As all the fossil technology companies know, we'll wipe the floor with them. And it's <laughs> as simple as that. And that, that's the same with you know, pretty much every heat pump brand. It's a, it's a fight between all of us, but we're all on the same page when it comes to What's the future? For those people that are tuning in and, and watching this uh, episode, mm. first time they've heard of CTC, what would your biggest kind of selling point be to them in terms of why they should consider getting a CTC heat pump? Again, good question. Um, yeah. I, think, I think given that we're in, a, you know, we're in an exhibition hall today with hundreds of miles yeah. of brands here, and having been in this industry for you know, well over 20 years and the, the way I've seen the growth of the different brands and it's overwhelming now the entries that are now, you know, the new entrants yeah. coming in. What I would say is if you boil it back down to some old fashioned values, ask the credibility and the, the pedigree of the brand you're going to put in here. For me, heating hot water in a family home is a very emotive thing. So what you want to do is first of all, get something that's reliable. Nobody wants to be without heating hot water. That's the first thing. Then you want to look at what's the ethics behind the brand. You know, am I buying something that's been made in a sweatshop somewhere or unethically? Probably if you don't do your homework. If you know it's built in Sweden, you know, look at the country, look at what Sweden's known for. You know, there's a reason why 
expensive Volvo cars sell, etc., etc. It's not because they're the cheapest. Did they lead and innovate in all the safety features in cars? Yes. So it's all about what matters. Not everyone's got a purse to pay for the best of everything. I get that. But equally, if you've got a nice home, do you want a standard white box outside it? If there's a slight stylish, sleek, Swedish designed, yeah. Swedish built product. So it's about what matters to you. But ultimately it's gonna come down to, is it reliable? Is it very efficient? And is it gonna serve me well? And these are all the things that are very important, I believe, when you're buying a heating system. It's very emotive. And what about the controller? This is, this is a pet peeve amongst all homeowners is the controller. They shouldn't really be fiddling with them, but yet, you know, the controller has become a key kind of place for a lot of homeowners to get drawn to. What's your controller like? Again, very on topic question. And probably the last five years, it's been a very topical question in terms of we're all living in an age where we control everything from our phone, you know, whether it be an air fryer or whether it be, you know, doing the lights on on Thursday afternoon, whatever it might be. Simple answer. Um, and obviously I'm of an age that, as you can tell, I'm, you know, I'm older than 20. Um, 22. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I'm also deluded. The simple answer is, like all brands, we have got to raise our game on integration. Yeah. We, we are smart grid ready. You know, we, we can capitalize on free tariffs and all the new tariffs that are out there, which are amazing. We've got all that built in our technology now. Um, we can integrate with battery storage. Um, and solar. Yeah, and solar, absolutely. Um, Again, with that product and other things we can do. For me, the app's um, certainly very good. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's the, the best in class, but it's, it's designed in-house. It's our own software, guys, which is a really good point of it. So it's all integrated. Uh, it's getting better and better in terms of what people can do from the home. An interesting point that was made to me is if you look at most homeowners, and this is, you know, totally generalizing, but it's a fact, most homeowners aren't that bothered about what they're doing with their heating one month after having it. Yeah. If you think about your own habits, what is a novelty? By its nature, it's a novelty for a period of time. Yeah. Once they get used to it and they know the house is nice and warm, especially when you tell them that, like our brand, the heat pump actually learns your behavior and gets better and better. You don't do anything. So every time you twiddle with it or not, you know, do something, it might feel good, but you're actually not doing anything helpful. Can you? Yes, you can. All the things you'd expect, hot water, colder, warmer, temperatures up and down. Yes, you can do all that but really you don't need to do it. Thanks for your time, Tim. Absolute pleasure. Thank, Thank you, Miles. Nice to meet you finally. Nice to meet you. <laughs>